Good morning, Reverend Helen here from my kitchen. And last time I was in my kitchen talking to you, I was talking to you about ascension, the time when Jesus left earth, went up into the clouds and left the disciples on their own. Except they weren't on their own because Jesus said to them, I will be with you always. And he told them to do three things. He told them to go back to Jerusalem, to pray and to wait. So 10 days later, we have another story to tell. For 10 days, they waited together in Jerusalem. They walked back from the Mount Olivet to Jerusalem, which took about a day. And they had a room there in Jerusalem that they stayed in. And this was the, the close group of Jesus' friends. So let's see who it says in the Bible was there in Jerusalem. There was Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, Judas, and Mary, his mother. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven people who are named. But we know there were many more people than that who were followers of Jesus, and there were lots of women. But in those days, women didn't necessarily get their names written down. So, from these 11, we know that the church was built. That is the church that is the people, not the building. And so, there were lots more people. And by the time of Pentecost, it seems like people were joining in. People were joining in this amazing new group of people who called themselves Christians. And they were rushing to join, to pray, and to live differently. And we are part of that, from that very beginning, because today, Pentecost on Sunday, is the birthday of the church. More and more people joining in. And so we will have cake. So at the end of all of this, we do proper birthday things and have cake, because it's the birthday of the church, the church's birth when people began to gather together as followers of Jesus after Jesus had ascended. So what happened on Pentecost? I'm going to put my disciples away. Disciples were gathered and this is what is written in the Bible about what happened on the day of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were waiting. Divided tongues, like fire, appeared among them, and a tongue, imagine, rested on each one's head. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other language as the Spirit gave them ability. Jesus had told them that the Holy Spirit would come. He had told them, go to Jerusalem and wait for the Spirit. But the Spirit is something we cannot see. The Spirit is what fills us with God's energy and gives us the power and the strength and the love to go out into the world and to be God's people, to be loving, to be sharing, to be kind, to change things for the better. It gives us that power inside of ourselves. So these tongues of flame came and rested on their shoulders and suddenly they found they could speak any language. So that they could speak to somebody from another country, but somebody from the other side of the world. They could speak to anyone who needed to understand. It's like me being able to use different words to explain things. When your teachers explain things, they explain one way, it doesn't make sense, they explain a different way, it makes a bit more sense, and so on. Suddenly, the disciples were able 
to explain Jesus to people. And that's what the Holy Spirit gave to them, the power and the energy to do that. But it, we got these wonderful, wonderful descriptions of the Holy Spirit. One of them is tongues of fire, one of them is wind, and one is the Holy Spirit itself. So tongues of fire, wind, which of course we can't see, but we can feel, and the Holy Spirit. And because of all that fire, and because it's a festival, we celebrate Pentecost by wearing red. If you could come into church, if I could go into church on Sunday, I would wear a red chasuble. I'd be wearing red and there'd be red on the altar. The only thing, and also, also, you can't see because I'm sitting, I would wear my red shoes. So red is for Pentecost. Red. Let's think how we could describe the Holy Spirit. Lots and lots of people describe the Holy Spirit as a dove. And if you remember Jesus' baptism, a dove came down and hovered above Jesus' head. And that was a symbol of the Holy Spirit. So there may not have been an actual dove. But we talk about the dove representing the Holy Spirit. We talk about wind and we talk about fire. So let's see what we could make to show that, to show that in the world. We're going to make a wind sock. So I'm going to change the, camp, the angle of the camera a little bit and show you how to make a wind sock to represent the fire. So you need a piece of card and we're going to put the dove on the card. So we start, you can draw your own dove or you can cut one out like I did from printing it off. So we need a dove. And if you remember the story of Noah's Ark, there's a dove in Noah's Ark that brings the good news. The dove comes with an olive branch and shows Noah and all the people in the ark that there must be land somewhere. The dove has in its beak an olive branch. So it's proving to Noah that there's land somewhere, there must be a tree that can be visited somewhere. So for Noah, the dove is good news. And we often use a dove for peace. And one of the things that Jesus wanted his disciples to do was to go out into the world and preach the peace of God. A peace that makes everybody happy and makes everything fair. So, cut out a dove, and because we're going with bright, fiery colours, I've got a piece of orange card, I'm going to stick my dove onto the card. No. Give my dove an eye. There we go. Press it down. So we've got a dove on the card. And what we're going to do is make long streamers to come down here. So the next thing I need is some tissue paper. Now any colour will do because I know that if you're at home or even at school you might not have all the colours you want. So any colour will do and I'm going to go very orange today because orange is what I've got. So I'm going to cut some tissue paper like that. And so I've got lots of pieces of tissue. And they're going to be stuck onto the side of the card that doesn't have the dove on. They're going to be stuck on that side. And so I'm going to lay them down. Like that. One, two, three, four, oh, that's two, five, six, seven, there we are, one, two, three. There. 
Now the simplest thing in the way to stick them down is some nice tape. So I've got a big roll of tape here on the end and I'm going to stick it across all of that to hold it in place. Yep. Press it down and press it there. Now a wind sock is a funny thing because it's not actually a sock at all but it shows us where there's wind. So the next thing I'm going to do is to curl this around like that to make a cylinder and to hold it in place I'm going to staple it at one end and staple it at the other end now And all of a sudden, I've got something that looks like that. So there's the duck, and there's the bits that hang down. And I want to be able to hang it up. So I'm going to make some holes at the top with my hole puncher. There we go. One hole, two holes on that side. And then holes again on this side. One, two. So I've got four holes in total and then I need some string because this is going to be a hanging thing. So I'm going to cut two pieces of string the same length. There we go. Thread them through. There. That's one side, and on the other side the same thing. So, I'm lucky because red is my favourite colour, so I like doing all these things. So we're going to pull them through and then tie a knot on one side and on this side, take these two bits, tie a knot. Lots of people to help you with this. And then we need one more piece, because those are coming like that, we need one more piece to hold those together. One final piece. Now you might want to put some lovely flames coming out of your dove. I'm not going to spend any more time on this now, but you could put flames on your dove coming out of the tail of the dove so that you've got the dove, you've got the flames, and go back to how we were before, you end up with that. You see? Now, at the moment, I've got the dove, I haven't put any wings of um, flame on it, and I've got the streamers, but I haven't got the wind. So let's see what we can do about that. Another picture of a dove. Now then, I hope that I will be able to show you how this is going to work. Here, is a wind sock I made earlier and as you can see there are flames coming out and it's a different sort of duck. But at the moment it's spinning a little bit but it's not doing very much. So let's see what we can do. We can introduce something invisible that will make that situation change. There we go. So I have brought wind into the room and now it moves. You can't see the wind but you can see the effect of it. I can feel it a little bit and I can see the effect. So the wind is working on the wind sock and making 
the stream is at the bottom, move, you can see the effect of the wind. So it's important to know that although we can't see the Holy Spirit, we can feel its effects. And when you know that you're feeling brave and loved and you're going to do a good thing, the Holy Spirit is there with you. And the Holy Spirit helps us to bring about change. And the grown-ups in the village are going to be writing their prayers for change on red ribbons and hanging them around in the village, particularly in the churchyard. So if you can get down to the churchyard, you'll see people's prayers, their spirit-filled prayers for what they would like for the spirit to do. So I promised you cake. Before we have cake, we're going to pray. Put your hands together. If you would like to, you can close your eyes, but we're going to sit still and make a prayer about the spirit. God of the wind, God of the fire, God of the Holy Spirit, help us to know your spirit although we cannot see it. May the spirit fill us with love, may the spirit fill us with your energy so that we can be Christ's hands and feet in the world. Amen. So that was it. Jesus was no longer with his disciples. He'd left and gone back to God. But God sent the Holy Spirit to be with all Jesus' new followers so that they could go out and tell the good news. And the Spirit remains with us. So we need to tell the good news of God's love in our lives. The way we live, not necessarily talking, the way we live. And each one of us joins in and the church gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And now, of course, the church is all over the world. There is Christians everywhere in the world. And that's because those first apostles they didn't stay in Jerusalem. They went off on journeys. And they wrote about their journeys. And they started new churches and new groups. And new people joined in. Until... There were Christians all over the world because the good news works for everybody and means that everybody can feel God's love and share God's love. So what a wonderful way for a church to begin. Flames of tongue on your heads, the spirit filling you with love and energy and then rushing out and telling everybody, listen, there's this amazing way in which we can live in the world. Jesus Christ showed us how now we must go and do it. We must share, we must love, we must not hurt each other. All of those things, all those school values that you have are all in part of that good news. And on Pentecost Sunday, we celebrate that. It's a massive celebration and it's the church's birthday. So I promised you cake. There we go. There's the cake. We need to light the candles. Hope I can do this well. There we go. Candles coming up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, now, we have cake. What do we do when we have a cake and a birthday? We sing. So I hope that you will sing when you see this cake. I can't sing to you on my own. I think that would sound a bit sad. But I can play it to you with my special cake slice. So this is the birthday cake knife in our house. And if it's birthday, I'm going to press the top button. If I was with you, I'd ask one of you to do it, but I haven't got anyone to do it, so I have to do it myself. Here we go. There you have it. Happy birthday to the church. And I hope you can make a windsock 
and you can see the wind and feel the spirit in your lives. Have a very, very happy Pentecost. If you want at the end of the happy birthday to say Amen and join in with the good news, go down and look at the church and see if you can see the ribbons that everybody has left there. One more thing. Blow the candles out. Here we go. Let's see if Reverend Helen can blow these candles out. One, two, three. Bye.